10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast, Episode 158. Hey everybody, welcome back to episode 158 of the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast. My name is Nick Manella, I'm the creator and host of this show, and we are very, very happy to have you in today for another short and concise jazz lesson, which we do every single Friday here on the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast. Just a reminder that if you'd like to get the PDF to this episode, and this one is a doozy, you're definitely going to want this PDF. You can go over to our Patreon page, which is located on our website, 10minutejazzlesson.com. Click on one of the Patreon banners, head over, pledge your support. It's only $3 a month to show your support, keep the podcast going, all that good stuff. And uh, we really appreciate all the people over there that keep this show running. You are the ones responsible. As you know, we do not do any advertising on this show. Basically, our sole source of operating income is from that Patreon page. So if you're somebody that wants to get better at jazz and you feel like these PDFs can help you do that, go over and sign up today. I've got to thank one person for signing up this week. Thank you to Mary for becoming part of the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson family. We really appreciate it. So again, 10minutejazzlesson.com. Click on one of the Patreon banners. Go over there and get your hands on 158 PDFs from every episode that we have ever put out. All right, let's get into today's episode. Super excited about it. So today is our usual monthly episode where we explore a transcription or a lick that we got from somebody out there in the world of jazz that I feel like can be beneficial to you. And this one is going to be a little bit different. Instead of looking at a short piece of vocabulary very closely, what I've done this week is I've actually transcribed an entire chorus off of somebody's Instagram page. So let me give you a little bit of background on this artist. So this week is going to feature the amazing trumpeter, flugelhorn player, Gary Aylesbrook. He is based out of Bristol in the United Kingdom, and he is one of the best trumpet players on the scene that I know of. He has one of the sweetest sounds I've ever heard, one of the best sense of swing, uh, just an amazing, amazing, tasteful, uh, very experienced player. So we're going to feature his Instagram video over Joy Spring, which he posted a couple of weeks ago. And I was so taken by this particular one minute clip that I decided to transcribe it and provide it for you guys. Now, as I said, this is going to be a little bit different. Normally what we do is we get into the real nitty gritty of what's going on harmonically uh, with something. But today we're going to look at this from kind of a 10,000 foot view. We're going to think about some of the intangibles that make this so amazing. And I think every once in a while, it's good to step back from the sort of note by note um, understanding of what's going on in a solo or, you know, the, the very microscopic points of trying to get better at jazz and think about it more on a macro level. So you can take the PDF this week of the transcription and you can analyze everything that you want from it. And I do suggest doing that because there is a lot of great harmonic material to glean from this. But we are going to just talk about some of the stuff that Gary does that I think makes him so great that so many of us can start to think about in our daily practice. So let me start by actually just playing this clip for you. So this is Gary Ellsberg playing over one chorus over Joy Spring. And the first thing I want you to think about on the initial listen to this, hopefully you're familiar with the tune Joy Spring. What I would like you to do is I'd like you to think about how when Gary is playing over this tune, you can actually hear that it's Joy Spring. That's going to be the first thing. He's so fantastic at outlining the changes that there's no doubt in your mind or your ears that this tune is joy spring so on your initial listen that's what i want you to think about here we go (laughs) 
So he starts by quoting Joy Spring, just so that we know what we're getting into. And then actually one of the coolest parts about this video is that he actually puts the changes on the video as they go by. So you got to go over to Instagram, check out at Gary Aylesbrook. I mean, the channel is amazing. You're definitely going to want to follow him. He posts all sorts of really, really cool stuff. But that's the first thing I want you to do is uh, actually watch him play it. But can you hear Joy Spring? Joy Spring has some of the most unique and recognizable chord changes that I've ever heard. Um, and it's really reflected in his playing. Okay, so now we're going to listen to it again. And this time, what I want you to think about is I want you to think about his articulation style. I think that Gary's articulation style is one of the things that makes him swing so hard. What you're going to notice is that the articulation is never rough. It never sticks out as being a non-integral part of the line, meaning that he's never articulating just to articulate. He's always doing this in service of what he's trying to convey to you with his line. And this is one thing, I honestly think that articulation and developing a clean articulation style and one that doesn't get in the way of your lines is probably the shortest distance to you where you are now and playing a lot better. This is something that we don't think about a lot. Sometimes we get caught up so much in harmonic direction and, you know, the content of our solos that we're not thinking about how that content actually comes across to the listener. And Gary is very, very clearly somebody who thinks about this a lot. So this time through, as you listen to it, I want you to think about the way that he articulates. Let's listen again. just amazing when you think about the fact that he swings so hard and a lot of that has to do with the articulation all right now we're going to get into the final thing that i want you to think about and that is the time so one of the things that makes it swing a lot is the way in which he articulates the second thing that makes it swing so hard is his sense of time it is just rock solid metronomic even though he's not using a metronome so that's the other kind of intangible that we all need to be working on we need to be working with that metronome and we need to think about where we're going to place our eighth notes our quarter notes and any other subdivision that we are going to use in our solos, they need to be perfectly in time. And Gary is, again, just a master of this. So this time through, when we listen to it, I want you to kind of tap your foot along with it or snap your fingers or whatever you kind of do to keep that internal sense of time going. And I want you to notice kind of how perfect Gary is with his eighth notes and his subdivision and everything is just there it's there with authority and this is something that we can really really take some inspiration from and know that we need to you know get that metronome turned on and and actually think about what we're doing 
So let's listen to it one more time. And this time I want you to think about how good his sense of tempo and how good his subdivisions are, how complete that sounds when he plays. Now, he obviously purposefully slows down at the very end there, so that's not part of it. But the rest of it, it's pretty darn airtight just as far as he plays. And any wandering that he does do, it's not really a big deal because the rest of it is so well done that you barely even notice it if there's like, you know, a millisecond delay between the and of four and one. It's not a big deal because overall, the overarching sound of his playing is so awesome that you don't even notice it. So that's a good thing to notice right there is that if the majority of your concept is just amazing, little mistakes, they don't matter as much. Now, of course, I'm not saying that he's making any mistakes because he's not. Um, so this is like a clinic on playing a cappella, playing over a bebop tune, playing with great articulation and playing with great time. Again, the harmonic material is going to be great to study, and you're going to get that on the PDF. So don't worry, you will have a chance to get into the nitty gritty of what he's playing. But I like to listen to music this way a lot of the time. And what we just did, I do that a lot. So I will go and I'll listen to a solo that I'm particularly interested in. I'll go and listen to it like maybe a dozen times. And every time I listen to it, I'll think about a different aspect of it. So as I go through, I'm not trying to absorb everything that's going on in the solo all at once. I'll hone in on, all right, what's going on with the articulation? All right, what is this artist doing with the time that makes it sound really good? Okay, what's happening with the phrasing? How is the artist phrasing this stuff that makes it really swing? I think that listening to music this way can really teach us a lot, and that's what I wanted to highlight on this episode. So again, I'm going to leave a link to the actual Instagram video in the show notes this week so that you can go and easily find it. And make sure you go on Instagram and give Gary Aylesbrook a follow. You will not be sorry. Um, he's fantastic, as I said. And a lot of the stuff he posts is very, very educational and is just going to inspire you. So make sure you follow him on Instagram at Gary Aylesbrook. And uh, thanks to Gary, I actually reached out and asked his permission to use his material in this episode, and he was very cool about letting us do that. And actually, we're working on maybe getting him onto the show to talk about playing a cappella and how he approached this. So hopefully that will be coming in the near future. If you have any questions about this or want to leave any comments about this episode or Gary's playing, the 10-Minute Jazz Lesson Community Facebook group is a great place to do that. And remember, we do have the entire transcription on our Patreon page, so make sure you go and sign up to support us today. All right, that's going to do it for this week. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. We'll see you next week with another jazz lesson. Have a great weekend, everybody. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.